What's up? I'm Satami. Here we talk about whatever I want to. And today I'm going to talk about this art that's been on the back of my wall because I know, I know somebody out there is like, girl, what happened to your riot quilt? And the quilt before that? And the quilt before that? Well, honey, I was planning on finishing my, my riot quilt to completion when I got an email. I don't know when I signed up for this, what I signed up for to get this. However, I got an email from somebody, the Henan Center, the Hanan Center. Not sure how it's pronounced. It's H-A-N-N-A-N. -N -A -N, and it's in Detroit, Michigan. It's calling for artists by the July 31st who portray a grandmother in some way. And it says... It just says, grandmother plays a unique role in each person's life, but she is an essential and pivotal figure in all families and in society at large. This exhibition is open to every possibility of grandmother and sets no boundaries as to how you may represent her. Your interpretations of the theme and the form of artistic expression you choose, these will show what the essence of grandmother is to you. It says, call for artists July 1st to the 31st is when you can submit all disciplines. They will be exhibiting through the gallery, the K-Rod Gallery and online, August 21st through September 30th. And I think they'll have an opening reception on the 21st of August. So it's multicultural, multigenerational. You know, you basically just have to submit something by Friday, July 31st, 2020 to Richard Reeves. It doesn't ring a bell, literally. I don't, I don't know when I signed up for this, what I signed up for. And as you may well know, I'm a transracial adoptee. So I don't know my grandmothers like that. Okay. And I don't know my, you know, I, I don't even know my kids' grandmothers like that. Okay. So, when I saw this, the thing that attracted me was the idea of all, you know, mediums, what, however you choose to express yourself. We talked about what do, what am I supposed to do with these quilts when I make them? So I thought maybe I'd try to make a grandmother quilt that honors what I know of grandmothers, even though I didn't have much experience growing up unfortunately, and my kids likely won't have much experience growing up. That's one of the few things I won't provide for them. So I decided to try and honor the the, the, the black grandma who, who adhered to African traditional religion, indigenous, native, tribal ways, even when it was kind of taboo. So originally, I just had the white thing behind her because I was like, I don't want to make this too big. I have to finish by the 31st. I want to try and finish by the 30th. My birthday is on the 24th. I want to try and, you know, be done, not be stressing around that time. Then the blue right here, this was purchased for a different quilt idea. With, if you'll remember, there was protests in Sudan where like young, a young black woman was standing on a car preaching with her big, circle gold earrings and she's all dressed in white that's what this blue was for i might get the blue again and try this quilt again but i kind of want to i'm probably going to lift her up and then have her sitting i think this pink is going to go and we're going to use like a white a white dress for her to sit and we're going to represent the the ancestral grandmothers of our culture who carried on African traditional religion, and by extension, all these people, all these grandmas who kept going even in the fight, you know, as women, as people who had been through it all, they kept feeling like it was something they needed to hold on to, pass on to the next generation, adhere to these spiritual practices. So that's what I'm going to represent here. Um, you know, I've seen pictures of my own grandmother. She looks a lot like me, actually, which was very surprising for me as an adoptee, seeing someone who looks like me, has my features, is the black person of my family, because I, as a young girl, felt like my features perhaps weren't, like, very black. 
So I thought a lot of my features perhaps came from my Salvadoran side, but in actuality, y'all, I'm like a carbon copy, slightly lighter skinned of my grandmother. And I also uh, met my mother-in-law. She also inspired this piece. There's, you know, not a lot of physical experience I have with grandmothers. People just doting on you as the next generation, which would be nice. If you've experienced that, you were blessed. But for me, my experience has largely, largely been spiritual, ancestral, you know, cultural. So that's what I really want to represent. So I have some like jewelry here. I'm going to likely lift this whole thing up to like here so that she can have a dress that really goes down and out. But yes, I'm really excited. I, I, I've never gotten, you know, the email that really called to something I was doing like that before. Um, so here's hoping and I'll keep you updated. We'll see what comes of all this. And if I can, you know, really express myself through this medium and maybe get chosen who knows and maybe just make a, a crone quilt just because who knows um but yeah I, this fabric was this is like polyester this is not cotton it wasn't what i thought it was when i purchased it but it's so beautiful and i think it goes well with the yellow and just the just the beauty and the mystery of people who long before us were still carrying on these religions. Like, it's hard to do this religion now. People are trying to call you the devil and crazy and doing too much now. I can only imagine what it was 50 years ago. I can only imagine what it was in 1920, whatever. To try and just be you, to be authentic, to be spiritual, to, to work with what, what gifts you have as a spiritual black person. Most black folks are very spiritual. But to also have to deal with all those things that were happening, but know that you were passing it on. So, you know, for me, I'm just so grateful that they kept fighting and kept doing it despite all the pushback and please convert and like victory conversions, what have you from Christianity. We still managed to push through. So I'm going to probably add some other things to this as I go along, but... This is what I'm going to be working on for July for sure. And hopefully I'll have something finished by the final week so I can send it in and we can see if maybe y'all it's hard when I see other people who quilt, especially black quilters. Cause like people like Bisa Butler, Faith Ringgold, y'all, they out here are like quilting, quilting. I don't know, but maybe they're not, you know, entering this competition. Maybe I can actually get exhibited at a at a competition at an art gallery that would be so exciting to see, have other people see my art and think about what I'm thinking about no one ever thinks about what I'm thinking about which is why I have my diary here in case somebody else ha ever has this on their mind I got it on my mind too honey so she's really plain right now this is not my usual type of artwork but I have extravagant plans to expose her to more and more, make her more extravagant, more like me, you know, but also not like me because I'm, I'm a product of my ancestors, but I'm not what they were like, obviously. I'm a little weird, a little different, a little, you know, something else. So, yes, I want to embody that African priestess, but also the black American priestess, the, the combination that came forth to create what we have years, years, years ago and continued the tradition so that people in the 80s, 70s were able to connect to this. And then here we are 2020 and we're still able to connect. Thank you so much for watching. I'll keep you updated. May your ancestors and spirit guides be with you at every crossroads. And I will see you next time.